COP28 President Sultan Ahmed Al Jaber opened the 29th session of the Conference of the Parties by expressing gratitude to delegates for their commitment to addressing global climate challenges. In his remarks, Al Jaber emphasized unity, action, and the UAE's dedication to fostering partnerships and dialogue amid global complexity and conflict. He urged attendees to continue working together to deliver meaningful result. Assalamu alaikum. Distinguished delegates, it gives me great pleasure to declare open the 29th session of the Conference of the Parties to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change. Your Excellencies, colleagues, friends, and members of every delegation, it is a great pleasure to join you here in Baku for the opening of COP29. And let me begin by thanking our hosts for their warm welcome and generous hospitality. And allow me to extend my gratitude to every person in this room. By being here today, you have all made a choice to make a difference. And as I prepare to hand over the COP presidency, I urge you all to prove once again that we can unite, act, and deliver. <laughs> Excellencies, friends, we meet at a time of complexity and conflict. And against this backdrop, allow me to say that we in the United Arab Emirates will always choose partnership over polarization, dialogue over division, and peace over provocation. The Ukrainian Security Service and Special Operations Forces prevented the advance of the invading Russian army in the direction of Pokrovsk, Donetsk region. Drones and artillery strikes were launched against the advancing invaders with a large number of armored combat vehicles, artillery installations, military vehicles and trucks carrying ammunition. As a result, equipment and a lot of ammunition were detonated and disabled. Most of the infantry soldiers who participated in the attack were destroyed along with their equipment. The survivors tried to escape with the wounded, but many did not succeed.
Mobilization is going badly not only in Ukraine, but also for the Russians. The first clashes between the Ukrainian armed forces and the North Korean military have already taken place at the front. Yunayan media outlet asked whether Russia's other partners are ready to reinforce it with cannon fodder. Recently, Ukrainian Defense Minister Rustem Umarov said that the Ukrainian Defense Forces have already clashed with the DPRK military at the front. And although these clashes were small-scale, overall the situation is an unpleasant wake-up call. In particular, NATO's Secretary General Mark Rutt spoke about this earlier, noting that the North Korean troops that are currently fighting on the side of Russia against Ukraine pose a threat to global security. After all, in his opinion, the DPRK's participation in the war would mark the beginning of a much darker phase of a long conflict. The fact is that former U.S. State Department official David Tafuri said even before the presidential race ended that three more countries were ready to send their troops to the war in Ukraine. In his opinion, this would be Iran, Syria, and even China. Even if we do not take into account that Tafuri is just a former official who hardly has current intelligence data and only gives out his thoughts without specifics, the presence of foreigners in the Russian troops is an open secret. Since the beginning of the full-scale invasion, citizens of Cuba, Somalia, Nepal, Syria, Serbia, India, China, various African countries and the like have been spotted in the ranks of the aggressor. If we are talking about military advisors and instructors, then they have been fighting on the side of Russia, to put it mildly, for more than one day, more than one month, and more than one year, notes military analyst and ATO veteran Yevgeny Diki. Let me remind you that Iran sent not only shaheds to Russia, but also instructors from the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, who taught Russians how to launch these shaheds directly in combat conditions. That is, the first such UAVs were launched into our cities by Iranian hands, not Russian. And when this training was completed, an assembly line for these shaheds was set up in the Russian Alabuga. And there, again, Iranian engineers were involved. According to him, when North Korea had not yet started trading cannon fodder, but had already begun supplying its ballistic missiles, their crews arrived in the Russian Federation along with these ballistic missiles. At the very least, they launched these missiles at our cities together with the Russians. And most likely they even did it instead of the Russians. 